Hello and welcome to a special episode of Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast, episode 181, our four-year anniversary celebration. I'm Sean S, and here with me, the Tabletop Bellhop himself, Mo T. We record live Wednesday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern at twitch.tv slash tabletop bellhop, and we'd love it if you joined us. Thank you to everyone already here for our anniversary episode. Welcome to the Suggestion Box. This one's going to be a bit longer than usual for our anniversary. Like this comment from Glowing Turtle that said, Hi guys, enjoying your videos. And Neil Robinson who says, Congratulations on the anniversary. Sorry I can't be there live, it's a bit late for me. Next, some feedback from longtime patron of the show, Math Guy Dave, who has a short list of games we convinced him to buy. You definitely sold me on the one ring, though I haven't pulled the trigger yet because I can't find a group to run it for right now. You sold me on Herb Witches, but my store was sold out. Rumble in the Dungeon and So Clover ended up being purchased. Now, actually, now is probably a good time to promote our Discord channel. Now we've set up a custom URL to get you there, and that's discord.tabletopbellhop.com, but that takes up to 48 hours to go live. So in the meantime, you can use the bit.ly link that we're gonna drop into the uh, chat, and it's also bit.ly slash TTBH Discord. That's capital T, capital T, capital B, capital H, capital D, Discord. Uh, for Bitly, yeah, they do, after the slash. Before the slash, no. After the slash, yes. No, like the, yeah. DNS propagation is fun. All right, 
Back to the feedback. Next up, we have to thank Dr. Donna, another one of our patrons, for pointing out that this is our four-year anniversary and not our three-year anniversary, like we first thought and almost announced on last week's show. Donna also shared her favorite episode. So they said, I will be cheeky, but also very sincere and say that the very first show after that inaugural Sean Con is one of my favorites. I really like when both of you get to weigh in on a game, and I really like you both describing your plays. Indeed, I love when I do get to play games with my kids, but we're not that much of a gaming family, so to really get games played and get a better experience to talk about, especially for reviews, getting down to Windsor makes a huge difference. Now, Dave also shared a favorite topic, maybe exploring the multiverse, looking at the new Marvel RPG. I would like to see more content looking at new systems, etc., but it's not all the time that playtest rules are released like that. Well, next up, Mark Spector from Grand Gamers Guild reached out to us earlier this week to say, happy anniversary. I'd be happy to support your four-year anniversary with a copy of my upcoming game, Birthday Burglary. So there you have our first giveaway of the show. Don't worry, there will be more. This one is for one copy of Birthday Burglary, the latest holiday hijinks escape room game. To enter, head over to tabletopbellhop.com or follow the link in the show notes. Now also remember that our hotel guest level patrons also get another five bonus entries into all of our giveaways. Next up, this past week, we asked people to tell us about any games we convinced them to pick up, and since we're talking Grand Gamers Guild, this one from Mr. Rao Gaming fits well. They said, Garinto from at Grand Gamers Guild. It's so good and would not have heard of it without your pictures and review.
Next, we have Jarl Marksley, who says, Enough times that I can't remember specifics. I especially love the non-Amazon deals you were able to post. Next, we have longtime fan of the show and Patreon patron Brian Kurtz, who says, a ton. Most recent that we've enjoyed at the table has been Trap Words, but lots of others. Now, our Gwet Sisters says, too many games. And Think12 Games writes, many. I've been following you for quite some time. <laughs> oh, and he forgot gizmos there we go that's true yeah Well, that's it for this week's comments. Send your feedback to mo at tabletopbellhop.com or hit us up on social media. We've got one anniversary announcement and shout out before we get on to the main part of the show. It feels great to finally have some fresh art on the show, as while we love the branding that was done for us by Brian Weiss, the rest of our graphics are all kind of whipped up by us, often quicker or more last minute than is ideal. There we go. That's our that's our technical difficulties that you don't want to have to see. Well, thankfully, we haven't had to hit that button in a while, but it's good to know that it's going to look great when it is there. All right, now as a special treat for those of you here live, Gwen also set us a stop motion animation of her work on these new screens that we want to share. We're going to be doing this during the coffee break later in the show. Welcome to the lobby. A huge thank you to everyone who has stopped in to join us for our anniversary episode tonight. So while we're going to be spending the next segment talking all about us, we just want you to know that we wouldn't be here without you. Thank you. And the question is, where am I from? Where is it I travel from when heading down to Windsor to meet up with Mo and the gang? <laughs> mm. 
There we go. <laughs> At Tabletop Bellhop, we're here to answer your game, gaming, or game night questions. On a regular show, this is our main segment where we take one or more of your questions and answer them to the best of our ability. Now we are recording this live on Twitch. So if any of you fine folk in the lobby, our chat room, have any questions you'd like us to answer or have memories or comments about the last year, we welcome you to ask away and take part. That's a while ago now. Well, I don't uh, I don't record any RPGs, but uh I have and I and and thankfully my board game app, my my stats app has just recently fixed itself and allowed me to import all my board game arena. So this is actually a real total now, not just the physical game total, which would have been a kind of sad number if I hadn't been able to include board game arena. So I have 296 total game plays from a, for me, quite solid 61 games. We we do drag them out though, like uh, you know, a game of a game of Go Sushi takes a couple of days to play because we're all on different time zones. <laughs> well, I mean, think things like things like can't stop. We start like I've stopped playing, so it, you know, some some games do get retired as well. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah.
Absolutely. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> All right. Well, my top four most played starts with sushi go and this was my number one game thanks to regular bga plays and we actually generally have more than one game happening at once um which does occasionally get a little tricky to keep track of because there aren't that many uh, different pieces of sushi in the basic game but uh <laughs> such as it is yep yeah. uh we are we are now playing more games of Sushi Go Party, but we haven't completely let, let Sushi Go go either. So, uh, but we are playing more party than, than the original. Yeah. Uh, second up is Gonuts for Donuts. And honestly, this one kind of surprised me that it was as high up as it was. Um, I guess I just kind of, it kind of swaps over and you don't really even necessarily notice when a new game is started. It's just, it, the one thing about Gonuts for yeah, it's just kind of always, always going. And it, because of the nature of Gonuts for Donuts, it doesn't have the same, um, okay, a round is done that uh, Go Sushi has. And so the difference between a new game starting and how badly you were doing on the last round or if someone made you give up all your cards, it's always it's a little harder to tell. So that's, that's why this one surprised me uh, is coming up. Uh, can't stop. I was surprised because I have not played Can't Stop in a while, but I, we had been playing it so much that I guess it just kind of crept in at the end of the uh, or the beginning of the beginning of the time period we were counting that uh, it still managed to uh, creep in there. You know. You know, I have no idea, but I have I have seen several people on Twitter lately, one going out and buying it because they joined BGA and had to play it. So, yes, they they are still doing it because because they went out and bought they, they went and bought a special Japanese version because it looked cool and they they loved playing it after joining BGA. Uh, and then someone else was playing what was a, a really cool version. It was a rollout like felt uh, board. So it took up almost no space and it was just, you know, a felt board and some uh, some little uh, things on the, you know, little markers. Um, absolutely. So my first real game, I'm going to, you know, re physical game, let's put it that way. My first physical game is Draconis Invasion. And again, this is uh, this is part of why I rank this as my number one game for 2021. And the fact that, yes, we had definitely... I'd, we had to review it, but I also really enjoyed reviewing it. Uh, and then. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and then to fill out the list, my next six were Patchwork, Azul, Tapestry, Space Base, Splendor, and the Castles of Burgundy.
Oh, yeah. <laughs> But that's not an open invitation, just so that <laughs> works. Uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe once. <laughs> uh, so for me, I'm jumping right back to it, Draconis Invasion. So despite the dark art and some questions we had working it all out in the originally, this game was good enough for us to play it all the way through and then some more and then play the, you know, a, a campaign of it and then review another expansion and keep playing it. Now, I am a card game fan. There's no question that's thing. But this one really captured my attention. All right, so I'm going to put in Space Base. This game is just so well crafted from the expandability all the way to the fact that there's no real downtime on other people's turns from two to seven players. It is just a solid game, both in person or online, and, and that's Tabletop Simulator or Board Game Arena. No, absolutely. Yep, that's fair. Now, we've actually just had a call out in our chat room to all the other lobbyists. What's a game that you can't get anymore that the bellhop made you want? <laughs> and Pax is saying for them, it's Yardmaster. <laughs> and tech is saying Aventuria. <laughs> So 
So it was published by uh, Crash Games. <laughs> yeah, I have to say, I mean, it's the same for me. I it was on Lord, Lord, uh, Lost Ruins Varnak is on mine as well. It is a fantastic game. Uh, just make sure, learn on one side, and then once you're comfortable with the game, flip it over to the other side before, and, and then start playing on that on the back side before you. Uh... Yeah, don't start on the snake. Yeah, absolutely. There, I, the other one, the other option that may help is play with people who know the game, but keep, uh, you know, play real time with audio and like, you know, have a chat. It's just that, you know, learning what people can do and learning how all the different options play out. And it's, there's so much to grasp that first time seeing and, and experiencing what other people do as they play uh, Arnak really helps you figure out the game faster. Yeah, I think realistically, you're going to buy her, which is you're going to play it for a while and you're really going to love it. And after a little while, you're just going to want to pick up Herb Witches because it adds just so much more. The amount of extra content in Herb Witches is really staggering. All right, so my last one is Dune Imperium. Now, this game, which is not on the same list as Arnak because of any similarities, but simply because it's a strong game that, while not deeply thematic, is thematic enough to capture a fan's attention and give them, or me, the taste they need on top of just being a solid game. Yeah, I mean, you don't need the theme for this game, but because of what they've done and because of what Dune is, it, it works well enough that if you are familiar with Dune, I mean, someone who doesn't know Dune is not going to learn about Dune playing this game. <laughs> Definitely not. But if you are a fan of Dune, and we all are, uh, it really does work.
yeah, there are definitely some solid contenders on that list. It would be hard to cover all we've covered in the past year with more than 40 episodes since last anniversary and often more than two reviews in a show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yep uh so for me the first one is hellbringer this one was a slow burn the rule is leaving somewhat to be desired when we first cracked it all open but once we learned the game it just flows so well and was a game that in particular i found the solo play really stood out and that's an aspect of games i don't normally care at all about despite the fact that i don't have that many people to game with around me uh as solo games it just isn't something i do i'm much like mo if i if, if i'm, if I'm going to play on my own i'm going to probably sit on the computer but this was a solo game that actually was fun and i think we talked about before i sort of gave you that diablo feel It was... Yeah, no, the rule book is horrible. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Unfortunately, unless they fix the rule book, no one else is gonna have the good experience, I don't think. Okay. Gunkimono.
Yeah, and, and as Dee's pointing out in the chat room, it needs a reprint with a more uh, visually friendly uh, design. Uh, I, I did a test when we were when I was when I was putting the review together for our YouTube. I did a test and I took the picture of all of the different color tiles and gave it to a uh, colorblind simulator that I that I've used before, and it failed on eight of the eight of the eight of eight different colorblind tests uh, where at least two tiles became indistinguishable other than the over busy graphic art um you uh, know all eight different forms of colorblindness Well, and the thing is, again, you can't you can't copyright the, the the mechanics. So someone really could just remake this game completely different. Fair, no fair, no fair. <laughs> yep. All right. So my next one is Revolution of eighteen twenty eight. This game is probably under most of the world's radar, with a distinctly U.S. centric theme that has little to no appeal to anyone outside the U.S. other than some political historians. Yet for all that is a really great two-player game that makes you really think through your turns and your opponent's turns and your turn and your next turn. And well, really, a lot of thinking is there to be had. All right. Um, next up, style. Now, this is interesting how poor both of our initial experiences were. Moe's in person with some cutthroat players and mine with the digital version that left me utterly confused. Yet now, when we've learned it for ourselves, it turns out it's actually a great game and our initial impressions were clearly shaped by the manner in which we experienced it. Uh, I think uh, both of us have significantly done an about face in our opinions on Scythe. Mm. <laughs> well, and there's still expansions, though, too, though, so... Yeah, no, it's it's fun. I've I've been there on that patio and 
how to be here while playing that game. And it is just a good experience. I did. No, on me. I'm like, nope. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Well. All right. Well, to wrap things up, not all surprises are good. Now, while we try to keep things positive on this show, one game was left with a sour taste in our mouths. And that was Tales from the Loop, the board game. We're, all, we're both, all of us, huge fans of the world of Tales from the Loop. The art, the RPG, the TV show even. And we were so excited to get this board game in front of us. Yet, well, after much trying, a few player counts, and scenarios weren't completely broken. And that's not much of a selling point for a game. Uh, when the best thing you can say is, we figured out what parts of it weren't broken, um, that's really hard to, to make your, your standout pitch. Yeah, no, it, it's it's unfortunate because it it taints the brand, uh, frankly. Uh, you know, people are going to buy this, have a horrible experience, and come away with a negative opinion about Tales from the Loop, of which this is only one tiny little portion. And no, it didn't go well, but there's a whole lot of other Tales from the Loop out there to embrace and enjoy. <laughs> all right so for me herb witches for quacks again a must-have ish so everything included in this expansion belongs in the game but not in a this should always have been their way the game in its base form isn't in any way broken it's a fantastic game but the expansion of gameplay, no, no pun intended, brought by this is just so welcome. There's no need to buy it when you buy witches, but you're probably not going to want to wait too long once you've been playing a while and you just want to see what, you know, all the extra bits can do. Yes, sir. <laughs> Fair.
So for me, there's Draconis Invasion Wrath. Now this brought an interesting assortment of new cards to this game and did so in a well thought out campaign style. It introduced only a few new cards a session, so you really got to experience them before you slammed them all into your box and tried to figure out what layout you wanted to use later on. Uh, it really it really was a nice, you know, slow build through all the new cards and, and to experience what they had to offer. Well, no. <laughs> pace yourself, people. Pace yourself. Yeah, he's already gone. <laughs> All right, so before the tabletop bellhop launched four years ago, on what blog did Mo used to post his reviews? Now this one, this one's tough. I actually, I, it took me a beat to remember it because it has been you know, four years. <laughs> um, uh, so I, it'll be interesting to see if anyone who's here tonight knows what it might be. Answer it. Go ahead, Snail. You you can, if you know, you can you know, jump in there. Because uh, I, I don't think anyone else... Oh, Pax, Pax got it. There we go. Oh, wow. Yeah, possibly, yeah. <laughs> but yep, Pax Pax has got that. Good uh good job. That's fair. <laughs> yeah, Pax is a super fan. <laughs> I think I still have my login credentials somewhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, back back when I was still third on. Uh All right, well, congratulations, Pax.
Yeah, and see that one shocked me when I saw that on on your list because I had no idea. <laughs> I mean, that's it. that's just one of those. Yeah, yeah, we did that, and I still want to play. I still want to play that game at some point, but uh, the, the the idea that that would be super popular for us did not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah unfortunately uh as much as we appreciate his contribution to gaming in windsor we do sorely miss his contribution to ramen in windsor yeah yep Yeah, a more solid hobby game from Exploding Kitties. Yeah, that's... Uh... Again, that's another one of those games where, yeah, yeah, that's that was a game. <laughs> yeah. But it, it just kind of shows what, uh, you know, if you hop on the trends and what, what is popular, it, it's got legs. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's hard to say. That's uh, I mean, we warn people, but yeah, you, you just can't warn people enough about this one. There's just no way to do it. Um and Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and it it's just hard to sell to to save people from themselves. All right. <laughs> Now, while Mo and D control the the blog and and for the most part the YouTube, uh, I kind of have uh, my my domain is the podcast. So anyone who tells you they know exactly how many people listen to their podcast is either exclusive to Spotify, which has very detailed uh, lock in and uh, and stats because of that, or they're outright lying. <laughs> but I do keep some stats for our show, and I know how many times they've been downloaded, if not listened to, from start to finish. No, so I, well, no, I mean, I've got, there's, there, there's, the, the stats do get broken down. Like, I know that, you know, some of them come direct from the links. Like, you can, you can actually collect the, the direct link to our show on 
uh, Pinecast uh, records. Whether if it gets pulled from the RSS feed and downloaded that way, it gets pulled. If it's done on Spotify, Spotify actually has a separate uh, uh, analytics thing. In even in Pinecast, you have to go to click on analytics from uh, Pine uh, from uh, Spotify to read their stats because they are kept separately because of how they do their stats and stuff like that. So there are we do have a pretty good notice, and I can even tell you a lot of times, you know what uh, what app or what uh, browser downloaded them all. Um, but this one, this I, and there's stories behind this, but by a landslide. Our number one episode is number 79, published February of 2020, just before the pandemic. And that is Oldies But Goodies with an unbelievable 44,243 downloads as of this afternoon. Now, I don't know how many people have actually listened to it, but even if a fraction of them have, that would be fantastic. Yeah. Well, yeah, because because we're Canadian and we don't actually get to participate in Pandora because of geofencing, we don't know the details. But apparently Pandora has been pushing our episode on people or maybe not pushing, but suggesting or in some way bringing our content to the fore, which thank you, Pandora. I appreciate it. I just wish I understood it. <laughs> Now, clearly, we don't have a lot of Spotify listeners as uh, they only show having listened to 183 times out of all of our content combined. <laughs> so. Uh, mm, yeah. Right. Well, again, if it, it depends who's storing it, if if Board Game Geek, see if they're storing that, then they're actually breaking several rules and they shouldn't be. Uh, they, if they're pulling it from the RSS when it happens, that's OK. But if they're actually storing it on Board Game Geek, that's questionable. Yeah. So our next most played uh, is First Settlements, our episode number one with 1,253 downloads. And that's, so that's without the whole Pandora weirdness. So this is a reasonably honest 1,253 downloads that I really am proud of. I mean, I, I feel a little bad because our quality in episode one might not be the best way to introduce people to us, but uh, the content is still solid, I believe. And uh, it's nice that people have, uh, have, you know, at least jumped in and tried to listen to the beginning of us. <laughs> yeah yeah and see i i don't know personally i don't i've always yeah you know, i always usually unless it's a series you know a show that actually has a, a narrative uh i'll generally try to grab within the last 10 episodes um but that's just me i don't know maybe some Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, no, mine doesn't. Mine does. Mine actually starts at the last five, which isn't as many as I want. I would, I prefer the last 10. Um, but, uh, right. <laughs> yeah, no, unless it's a narrative, you're probably not going to get me all the way back to, uh, to episode one so coming in number third 
Uh, this is now our February AMA episode from 2020, which happens, perhaps not surprisingly, to have come out right after Oldies But Goodies. Uh, and it's coming in at 900 or so episodes. So my hope is that this is the people who li actually listened to Oldies But Goodies and thought we were good enough to try another one. So... <laughs> no that's true <laughs> uh and then coming in fourth is too fast too furious this is one of our two-player games episodes which comes in with a nice but rather leisurely 476 downloads I wonder if we if we need to do a meta episode where we uh, where we sort of, you know, link back to all of our individual two player episodes, but do a summary uh, of it all. Yeah. And thank you, Ryan. Uh, Ryan's just saying he he expects the crowdfunding red flags to tick up in interest over time. Um, I, I, we did get a lot of feedback on that one. So hopefully, uh, hopefully that one does, uh, ride up. Yeah. Best date night games is 162,000 page views. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, absolutely. I think the the right away people were trying to understand where Jaws of the Lion fit in. Uh, everyone knew what Gloomhaven was, but Jaws of the Lion was still this brand new, and it, it you know, sorry, yeah, people weren't. It wasn't available. Was it? Was it a new? Was it a follow up? Was it a, an expansion? Was it? So you know, how did this fit into the Gloomhaven world? And we jumped on that, and it, it worked. <laughs> Yeah, well, we 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 had to uh, we had to applaud people for doing a great job, and well, that's what you get. Yeah, if you interact with us, we don't really care whether you're thumbs up or thumbs downing. Interacting is what matters. <laughs> yeah. I mean super RPGs are in the 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 popular zeitgeist right now uh they are out there and i think you know and i you know, I, probably, I really do need to get off my butt and and do another topic because i think it will still probably uh manage to perform
Yeah. Uh, we didn't really like it. I mean, we 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 weren't big fans. Yeah. Yeah. It take it takes forever to play a game online. <laughs> yep. Right. That's fair. So, uh, you know, at this point, we would probably have trouble imagining anything on YouTube ever being as popular as our FAQ read through for Gloomhaven. Uh, that one just boggles my mind. It is at, oh, it is eight and a half thousand views, uh, which, I, which I mean, in the grand scheme of things, you know, in the, in, in the big world of YouTubers, that may not be a big number, but for us, that's a, a shockingly big number. And I mean, some of the other uh, episodes or uh, YouTube clips that we have that are over a thousand views, which for us, I mean, you know, we've got, we're, we're a little over a thousand people. So anything, anytime we have views over a thousand, that's a really nice thing for us. But I mean, unblock, unboxing Eclipse, Second Dawn for the Galaxy, an unboxing uh, getting over a thousand is is a is a shocking one, um, and uh, even that unboxing Robotech is almost at a thousand. <laughs> yep. Well, and then we've also we're also able to double down with our with the 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 wonders that is the Amazon uh, program that allows us to uh, make use of unboxing videos on that platform as well. So, no, they do not. They they are separate. Yeah, they are a separate content. <laughs> No, I mean gloom. It's it, it gloomhaven. Gloomhaven is its own thing. I think. <laughs> Fair.
I think, you know what, it's fantastic to think that we have helped reveal completely undiscovered content to people who weren't looking to buy, but already had a game that they thought they were done with. <laughs> uh, I, I, for me, I mean, realistically, I don't really do it. You know, I'm, I'm here for the, uh, on the on the backside of, of reviews to, to be the pretty face, but I have to say I did really enjoy the Marvel RPG back and forth we did in that format. And, and it's, it's interesting that it has turned out to, uh, to have some legs to it and, uh, you know, maybe be worth continuing on with. Yep. Yep. Versus the blog. Yeah. Yeah. That must be GURPS. Yep, Gail loves GURPS. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Yep. Yep. Nope, oh, absolutely not. especially this this uh, particular world we're in <laughs> Yeah, so the question becomes, um, why are they doing well? Is it because uh, it's it's the craved thing? Is it is it there are more RPG? Is it numbers? Like, are there just more RPG players searching than there are board gamers searching out there? Like, uh, are board gamers spending more time playing their board games and not searching on YouTube uh, and finding our content? Uh, you know, I suspect that if you if you did a full pool there are more RPG players than board gamers, uh, you know, hobby, hobby board gamers. Yeah. And I, I mean, it also sort of depends, you know, if you consider magic, a board game and magic players, board gamers in hobby gamers, and, and you know, that, that, that can certainly skew your numbers. But if, if we're, you know, in a large portion of the time, I think, you know, a magic player is more likely to be a D and Deer who plays magic uh, than a board gamer um, 
you know, than a board gamer as, as a Magic player. So, right. They, we, we lump them in, but I think they tend to think of themselves as separate. So, yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, and so that that's really kind of, it's it's really hard to know whether or not, you know, yes, they will do numbers, but is it worth it compared to focusing on what is arguably our, you know, core market, which is the hobby board gamers? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, like the tips and tricks for running a superhero RPG. Again, that makes sense. Uh, again, because superhero RPG, that's the zeitgeist we're in right now. And that's a pretty general superhero uh, superhero RPG topic. Um, it would be hard to find that kind of... Um... Right. Well, there we go. We we need we need we need Seuss to ask more questions. Yeah, we know we 168,000 views or something like that. It's Yep. No, absolutely. And and then we start getting into fights about orthog orthogonal and <laughs> uh and so apparently uh the, the blog does not easily do that. So we're not gonna get that did last year this data uh now we should we should have put that not not live. Hehehehe. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> so next up is one that we love but has just not gotten to the table enough because of other obligations and and needs and and, and time and player counts and it's just you know, it's a game we love and we love to promote, but that's Garinto from Grand Gamers Guild. Uh, thank you, Mark, for introducing us to this game, uh, because not only have we loved it, but we've been able to spread that love to so many others um, and, and hear back from other people saying, thank you for telling us about this. We love this game, too. Uh, and that's been so fantastic to hear. Uh, and, and for that, I wish it would get it down on our table more often. <laughs> yep. Nope. Uh, so next up is one that we actually kind of debated about this. This one took this. We took it took us a while to settle on this one because there are a lot of games we love, but we were trying to settle it down to four. And I actually ended up diverting away from the sci-fi theme that most people associate me with uh, and uh, going with supers because we're not talking RPGs here. But uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, going with a take that game, which is not something that anyone associates me with or really us with in general, but that is unfair. Uh, this is just such a fantastic game at its base. Even just talking about the very, the base game, it just works so well, gives you this theme park building experience um, with, with a, a lot of variety with the decks you're using. And then on top of that, you end up with this fantastic, uh, you know, uh, expansion uh, system that they've got as well, that just gives you so much more content and replayability. Once you've, you know, dug in and, and feel like you've maybe overplayed the beat then and learned all the the tricks from the base game there's all those expansions out there to go with and that's unfair oh yes yeah yeah No, yeah. but they basically built in house rules that players might end up coming up with, but they've built those into the game. Yep.
Game changer cards. There we are. <laughs> yep. Since this is a big one, we're going to let it run, the contest run, for three weeks. It will be open to anyone in the continental U.S. or Canada. Sorry, rest of the world. Shipping is just agonizing right now. As a special thank you for joining us here live tonight, we're going to drop a code in the chat that will give you five bonus entries to this contest. Good luck. Now, I don't know about you, but I think it's probably time to wrap this up and get to the after show for the real party. Tonight, since it's our anniversary and due to the fact that we would not be here still hosting this show without their support, we're going to shout out all of our current Patreon patrons. Brian Sheehan. Thanks, Brian. Brian Kurtz, our very first patron. Thank you for believing in us right from the start. Kevin Reno, thanks, Tex. Sorry you couldn't hang around all the way through. <laughs> William Fisher, thank you. Sean P. Kelly, from one Sean to another, thank you. Brian Van Beek, thank you, Brian. The Misdirected Mark Podcast, our sibling podcast. Thanks for your longtime support. Evil John. Thanks, John. Valentine Pache. Thank you. Matt Lichtenwaller. Thanks, Matt. Zopi, thank you so much. Now, before we start locking up for the night, I think we have one more, uh, what, one more for another quick trivia question and giveaway. Do do do, and and I think you think that's English, but that's really not English. Before we start locking up for the night, I think we have one more time. Another quick trivia. <laughs> it's mo, it's mo English. Yes, there we go. <laughs> Ooh. What was the RPG that we played the most together growing up? <laughs> oh. It is, it is. We, we have lost. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, we may have, we may have broken the, uh, no, definitely not. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's an understandable guess. No, I have never. Wow, go ahead and guess, Pax. There's no reason to... <laughs> and I didn't start role-playing until my teens. That's actually a very good guess, but wrong. That that would have been what most started early uh early on with. I once maybe I think we did one. Well, yeah, <laughs> yes, yes, ladies and gentlemen, the satanic panic was real. Our parents were f parents were freaked out about the concept of people playing. Uh, Actually, it's not. It is not a superhero RPG. Yep. <laughs> yep. No. Oh, uh, yeah, but you can Google that one. I don't think you can Google this one. So. Um. Oh, geez. Um. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I, I can't. Nothing off the top of my head. Um, Ron talks tabletop. Ron talks tabletop gets it. <laughs> there we go. Yep, war. We did play a lot of D&D, uh, &D, but uh, but no Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay. Yeah, Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay is the uh, is the answer. <laughs> well, that was the double bell. Though the doors to the lobby are closed, you can always find us at tabletopbellhop.com all over the web as Tabletop Bellhop, one word, and on your podcatcher of choice under Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast. While that wraps up the time we have for the show tonight, I invite all of you to stick around, grab a drink, and join us for the after party in the penthouse suite. For those of you who can't join us for the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast, I'm Sean. Thank you, and game on.